<laughs> All right, what's going on? We got live action here over in Chris's garage. Um, we got the stock exhaust, well, stock manifolds, the Catalyte pipes and the whole Corsa cap back that was all modified with the X pipe and all that jazz off. Let uh, me find a light. Yeah, where'd that flat light go? Oh yeah, I'll take that. So underneath the car, up there is where the stock manifolds were. Um, you can see that last stud right there uh, is broken, but at least the stud's still showing, so a nut can be threaded on and uh, welded. But the front one over on that side, and then the rearmost on this side doesn't have any threads showing. Uh, so we're gonna have to try and extract those. Um, we mocked up the shorty headers that I'll show you guys again. And it fit on this side, on the passenger side. Um, we'll have to rotate to clock the flange a little bit. We might have to hit the one side with a hammer a little bit just to clear the frame rail right here. But otherwise, uh, there was no clearance issues with the starter, bell housing or anything like that. Um, driver side should fit. Um, had no luck just trying to mock it up because I have to disconnect the steering shaft here uh, to get a little more clearance. And then I also ripped one of my plug wires. So right there, uh, the inside of the plug wire is still in the spark plug. But other than that, I think it should clear fine. Um, I'm gonna have to take off these uh, this oil cooler block and um, also in additionally to do the uh, new motor mounts that I have. So then the motor mounts I have are the uh, like the Gen 2 or whatever they are, Creative Steel Rebuildable Poly Mounts. So they're gonna go in to replace those Creative Steels that are in there, the older style. And then um, this is what the headers look like. They're just generic shorty headers for an LS swap off of eBay. Decent quality and all that. I got this one wrapped <laughs> and uh, <laughs> this one's all wrapped. Um, and this will be the harder one to get in. And I, I still got to throw some wrap on this guy here. Um, I got these gaskets. So I'm trying not to break. These uh, Remflex gaskets that'll help seal up the waviest of flanges. And then I got some vibrant spark plug covers. I got some replacement plug wires, um, some heat shielding and uh, a starter heat shield right here and basically everything we need to get this thing installed. All right, so I got the bracket out for the motor mount. That's my shot creative steel mount in there. Oh, Christ, and a bunch of rocks, sick. <laughs> Gonna shake that out. So once this is out, you got there's a rock stuck in the heat shield. There's a nut here and a nut here that holds the motor mount in. These new creative steel mounts have, uh, I guess you reuse one of those nuts, but up top, it's actually a bolt that bolts in through the top side. So, or no, bottom side has a bolt. Um, so I'm gonna take this off here, pop these nuts off, uh, I think they're 21s, and then we'll get this thing bolted back up. And this is the driver side. And, uh, The light I was using died. But you can see up there, now there's a ton of room. So this is the alternator cable that everyone talks about um, relocating and whatnot. But I'm gonna cover it with heat shield and just kind of tuck it out of the way. Um, it's actually start rubbing through the heat shield here, but not through the wire. But I'm gonna make sure this is all covered and protected before putting this thing back together. Um, that's basically one of the most important wires that are cables that I'm gonna be uh, focusing on. And uh, I think I might be able to finesse, now that the motor mount is out, I might be able to finesse the, um, the header up in without taking this off. But if not, tomorrow we'll worry about taking this um, steering shaft off and uh, going from there to get the header up. All right guys, day two of the header install. Last night, we ended it by hanging the headers off the engine and making sure that they're gonna work. We might have to clearance the one primary a tiny bit for the steering shaft, but it's really not too bad. 
So I'm running to the parts store now to get a couple coupler pieces for the exhaust for when we weld up the, uh, when we adapt it to the Corsa on the car, because again, these headers aren't made for this car, but it should be relatively easy. Just take a couple measurements, measure twice, cut once or something like that. But I'm gonna run to the parts store now, and then we're gonna get back over to the garage, and uh, I'm just rocking the Camry right now. I think this thing's a hot rod. I, I have to say, like having like a, a Camry, Camrys are like the best beater dailies. Like you can just hit bumps, just fly around and really just not care. And it's great. But um, gonna hit the parts store and then we'll head over and uh, try and get this thing done tonight. All right, so we're back getting after it here. Chris welded on, welded the bolts to the flange on the header so that they're now pretty much studs. That way we don't have to worry about trying to finagle a wrench up under, above the gasket when we're tightening everything down for good. I've been working on heat shielding stuff. So I have this starter heat shield that's gonna go on the starter right there. It's gonna wrap around, I'll trim it to size, and then I'm gonna use this stuff. It's like a one inch with a Velcro. Uh, I'm gonna wrap this starter cable that goes up and around just to protect everything there. I already did the header wire relocation or the alternator wire relocation. So basically the alternator wire comes down here with the knock sensor wire and then it goes down that way towards the alternator that is right there, if you can see it. Um, so what I did is I disconnected the two wires from each other there's a clamp up here, and I routed the alternator wire up through the frame rail piece here, and then I have it, you can see, you can see it come down and then uh, attach into the alternator. So I also heat wrapped it with that sleeve, the Velcro sleeve as well, so that it's protected from heat and then everything over here is pretty much protected. Once I wrap the starter wire, any excess, I think we're gonna throw on these oil cooler lines, even though now with these new headers, they're really gonna be out of the way, but just be safe. And then same with the knock sensor wire, I just have a piece right here, just in case it ends up getting close. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna knock that out. I got the one creative steel motor mount mounted in. This is the driver's side. I haven't done the passenger side yet. And then this is the one that I pulled out. It was kind of a pain, but we got it out. It's shot. It's weird. This like old, like heated up poly just literally just feels like jelly. But that's trash. Um, on the other header that Chris has, the driver's side one, I'm gonna hit the primary right here and right here a little bit just to make sure for sure that it clears the steering shift because it gets pretty close. But I want to bolt it all in and then put the motor mount in and then find out that it's not going to clear the steering shift. So um, we're making pretty good progress. I think the longest part is just going to be the cutting and welding here um, once the headers are bolted up, but we're getting close to that point. All right, same deal. Now it's just flat. Now it's time to put the driver's side one on the car and uh, we'll go from there. A quick update. So, got the motor mounts in. The new Creative Steel two-piece rebuildable, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I got a heat shield around my starter. I threw some heat shield around the brake lines. I threw some heat shield around the fuel lines. All kind of, these are kind of, well, the, the brake line one had a heat shield underneath of it. I just kind of stacked it. Fuel line, same deal. Over here, got the Creative Steel motor mount. I got heat shielding on my oil cooler lines. I got, uh, obviously, like I said, I did the uh, alternator wire relocation. Um, this header is not fully bolted down, but we do have, when it is uh, up high where it's supposed to be, we do have clearance with the steering shaft. Um, I probably didn't have to hammer it, but it didn't hurt. Um, got the oil cooler plate here. Uh, also did some heat shielding on the knock sensor wiring there. And uh, basically all I'm doing now, this guy is ready to get bolted back in. Um, we had to take it down because I couldn't fit the motor mount brackets in. So this guy's ready to get bolted back in, but I made a mistake. 
I broke a spark plug. The back plug on the driver's side, um, I hit it with the header and it snapped the porcelain. So uh, tomorrow I'm gonna have to go grab a new TR6 plug for this. Um, but I think I can access that plug still with the headers in. It's gonna be very tight. Um, but right now I am painfully, Chris is working on the piping here. So he's just prepping the test pipes that I already had in here uh, that Polly had done years ago. And uh, we're just kind of coming up with the game plan on how we're gonna do this. But I'm wrapping the header and it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. So um, I'm wearing my gloves. I'm getting fiberglass all over the place and it just overall kind of sucks. Uh, this one isn't coming out as pretty yet. I still gotta tighten it up once it's, I go through it all. But um, yeah, I'm almost done. I got to finish this, this runner and then I'm gonna do this runner here and then loop it up behind and then we should be good to throw this header on and then once we'll get the headers all torqued down and once they're torqued down, we'll hang the rest of the cap back on the car and then we're gonna have, then we'll start taking measurements and figuring out where exactly those uh, test pipes have to get cut down to and welded. Stop point, exhaust is back up. Uh, but it's not connected. Driver's side went pretty good. I'm gonna have to hit, when we pull this uh, little collector off, I'm gonna have to hit right here with a hammer just to make a little bit of space so I can spin it a little more. Um, and then I ran into an issue with the header, the little downpipe here, getting really, really close to the um, fuel lines. So, they're hard lines that are heat shielded from the factory. And then I heat shielded them with this wrap. And then uh, I put a piece of header wrap here, but what I'm gonna do is uh, bring back a clamp, wrap some header wrap around here, and then clamp it on uh, the pipe so that that's like three layers of heat shielding between the, um, the hard lines and the exhaust. Uh, maybe I'll do AM lines at some point in the future. Um, but for now that'll work and that's about it. They're all tight for the most part up top. Gotta swap a plug and then uh, figure out how to get some plug wires on and then also hope that the dipstick goes on with no problem. So, till tomorrow. So we're back day three uh, of the never ending header project. I'm up top here on the sick OSHA approved ladder safety second um, looking at the header from above here I had trouble reusing the stock wire on the second to last cylinder on the driver's side so I had these um what are they MSD wires uh, and I they're straight actually the one that's on there right now is a little bit of a bend at the end but they're pretty much straight I got these from stone back from a while ago it's like spares and uh, just because of the header design, the block hugger design, um, the only way to fit down there is to have a straight guy instead of one of the factory 90s like this. But so far, the very back cylinder of the factory 90 works and these front two um, should be no issue with the factory 90s. So I just replaced the spark plug that I broke with a new NGK TR6 plug. I gapped it to 0.028, which is what the plug that I pulled out was. This is what the, the bottom half of the broken one looked like. It just snapped the porcelain right there. But the plug still looked good after uh, a few months of driving after the cam. So now what I'm gonna do is just run down and torque these Remflex gaskets. So it's supposed to be torqued to 25 foot pounds. So I'm just gonna start in the middle and torque my way out with the torque wrench here at 25 foot pounds. And then I'll get the plug wires on and the vibrant covers and we should be good. Chris is down yonder. He's actually working on the exhaust, um, connecting the headers to the, um, the Corsa. All right, we're done. Sort of. <laughs> The exhaust is done and welded. 
we had like the battling welders here. Got some sick pipes to adapt to it. Did uh, trans fluid, some engine oil, everything's done. All the plug wires and all that are done up top. So now we just gotta put the exhaust on, fill it with oil, and hook the battery up. And theoretically it's done. Except for, all right, so I ran into an issue where the header pipe rests on the fuel lines here, but I ordered uh, compression fittings already and um, compression fittings to adapt. I already labeled them here. The feed and the return line to uh, dash six AN. So I'll probably come like somewhere back here and I'll put the compression fittings and run some AN lines probably down around here and then up with some heat shielding uh, just to protect it so that I don't have to worry about it. Um, obviously vapor locking the engine, I'll free up some space right here for this flange. So that was the only real hiccup that we ran into and uh, it should be a, a relatively easy fix to make these things work on the car. Hope so.